Blog Talk Radio. And welcome to Life Beats Radio. I am your host, Dawn Mack. And welcome to Tuesday and welcome to a brand new week. And uh, I know that a lot of you out there are probably going, oh, Monday, this week we had Monday. We had to go to work a lot of us. Last week we had Monday off celebrating the holiday. So for some of you, if you're like me, it's been a little bit hard trying to get back in the normal routine of things. Um, It doesn't pay for me to have some time off, folks. (laughs) But nonetheless, I'm glad to be back. We've we've had a few days off, just uh, kind of enjoying the tail end of summer. And can you believe it? It, it, We are already into fall. And I don't know about you, but in my area, the trees are starting to change color just ever so slightly. I mean, you're seeing hints and traces. And, you know, this time of year I love because you really get to see what God is doing visibly with your eyes. I mean, there's so many times I think we ask ourselves, God, where are you in the midst of things? But Mm. when you can see the leaves changing, you know without a doubt, God is definitely ever-present. And uh, and so I just love this time of year because it's just such a beautiful time of year. If you get out and take a drive, it is it can be one of the most serene and peaceful things you can do, and I always make a point to do that um, just because it is just such a, a... a relaxing way to just get out and enjoy a Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon and just really see the beauty of God's splendor and his world. And I want to welcome everyone tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. You And if you're brand new to our program, you picked the right night to join us because we have got a phenomenal artist with us tonight. I'm so excited to have her with us. As a matter of fact, when I received her music a couple weeks ago, when I first heard her songs, I just had tears. I mean, they were just streaming because it – you know, it just spoke to me in such a profound way, and, you know, and, and there was no doubt that I was going to get her on the show, and you will be blessed and touched, I assure you. Um, our guest, she has done some amazing things. She's performed and sang back up with artists like Al Jarreau, Morris Pleasure, Marit Brown-Clark, Sherry Marie, Patrick Davis, Israel Hooten. Uh, Vicki Winans, and the list goes on and on and on, and she is a beautiful, beautiful vocalist and psalmist, and I'm telling you, her voice is anointed, and it is definitely a heavenly gift from above, and we would very much like to welcome tonight Linda Clark. Hello, Linda. God bless you, Don. Thank you for that awesome introduction. To God be all the glory for all of those things. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Ah, well, the honor and pleasure is all mine. I, I'm i just honored to have you with us tonight. You are a phenomenal artist. I'm just going to go ahead and say that right out of the gate because, as I was saying in the intro, I was so blessed by your music, which, by the way, listeners will be playing towards the end of the show. But I, I really was blessed. I mean, your voice, you have the voice of an angel. Oh, man. And <laughs> it just... I mean, it just really just resonated within me, your music and the lyrics to the songs. Um, very, very powerful stuff. And and so God bless you for, for sharing your immense gifts and talents with the world. Amen. God bless you. I'm, I'm so honored and delighted that God chose me, little old me, to, you know, to, to do it. So I'm, I'm, all, I'm honored and delighted and humbled, really. It's a uh, blessing me to be a blessing. You know, it, it, it's interesting when you said that just now. It kind of popped in my head that, you know, we are always amazed and humbled by what God can do in terms yeah. of, you know, when you said little old me, you know, I kind of say that about this radio show because I've interviewed some of the, the you know, the most famous people in the world, and I sit here and go, little old me, you know. Yeah, um, God talk. chose me. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and so I, I am I'm constantly excited, and I totally understand where you're coming from, but it is mm-hmm. amazing, you know, all throughout Scripture, God shows us time and again who he yeah. used. I mean, just yeah. average, ordinary people who yeah. time and again he'd go to them and say, this is what I want you to do, and they would say, 
to me, God, you oh, know, me? Um, <laughs> me, I can't, I can't mm-hmm. possibly I can't carry out what that. you're asking me to do, you know, yes. I mean, yes. and, and I think it's, I think we have the same reaction sometimes when God calls mm-hmm. upon us to do something. I agree completely. I, I agree completely. Well, I want to kind of start off by just asking you, how did you get started, you know, in your ministry? And, I mean, Mm -hmm. how did you get to where you are now? Well, it's been a journey, an interesting journey. Um, Music has always been a part of my life. Um, You know, and born into a family of musicians, it's always been there. So, you know, that was inevitable, you know, but as far as the ministry side, um, you know, singing is what I've always done, even when I left my mom and dad's house. And once I came into the knowledge of who Christ really was, it became more than just a song to me. It became some. It became more of how can I use this gift that God has gave, given me to be a blessing to someone else. More so, hey, how? Where can this gift take me? No, it became more of how can I use it to be a blessing to someone. What is this gift really for, and what am I supposed to be doing with it? And that's really where I am now, the journey, uh, where it's brought me here. And there have been times when I've wanted, I thought I wanted to just, no, this song is for me, you know, I'm not uh, enough, I'm not qualified or quantified enough, you know, I can't do this or I can't do that. Oh, my God, the list goes on and on. But God continued to tap on my shoulder saying, no, I want you to do this, and I'm, and here we go again, little of me. So that's the journey, and I'm here, and I'm still on the journey, and I'm trusting God every step of the way, really. And, you know, I, I love what you just shared, and thank you, uh, by the way, because it really does kind of put things in perspective in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, that nothing is too big or small for God. And if he has a will about him in terms of our, mm-hmm. us and our lives and our purpose and what we're to carry out, he's going to provide the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> but <laughs> I think sometimes we get we get so caught up in the trying to figure it out ourselves that, you know, right. I feel like if God has planted the seed, he's going to make it come to fruition the way he wants to in his time. And um, and sometimes that's not on our timetable, but, you know, that's where we have to learn patience and just immense faith in knowing Absolutely. that he's going to lead us on the journey if he's put us on the journey, you know? That's correct. I do agree. You know, there's a saying that says if he brings you through it, you know, if he brings you to it, he'll bring you to uh, through it. And I, I thank God mm-hmm. for that. And oftentimes when I find myself in situations, even in ministry, it's like, oh, my God, how am I going to make it through this? And that's where that faith walk kicks in. You know, really, really have to trust. Because I don't know if you're a mother, Dawn, but, you know, I'm a mother and, and, and a wife, and we're always fixing things and, you know, putting things in this in, into order and perspective and always taking care of things. But, oh, my gosh, when you're walking with God, you know, it takes a total stepping back and totally relying on God to do you, you think you know what he wants to do in your life, but really taking a step back and allowing him to walk it out is a whole nother, a whole nother thing. Oh, yeah, amen to that. And, yes, I am a mom of three and a grandmother to one. <laughs> oh, and wow. I know all too well. <laughs> I know all too well what you're saying because, you know, as moms, I think it's part of our innate innate nature to just want to fix, you know, things when things are going amiss with our kids or life's problems. I mean, I think we think it's part of of the whole makeup of being a mom sometimes, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. total surrender to God is is so critical, I mean, because there are just some things, even as moms, super moms even, that yeah. we just are not equipped to handle, you know? That's right. That's right. And that's exactly where God wants us, putty in his hands. How uncomfortable mm-hmm. it is for us most times, but that's exactly where he wants us. And, you know, and when I think about that, I think about what an example we set for our kids when we allow mm. God to use us as the putty and the clay. Yes. Um, and to mold us yes. the way he wants. I mean, what better mm-hmm. way to model for our children Absolutely. by being able to just take our hands off, even though we're mm-hmm. moms and we're supposed mm-hmm. to know everything and have all the answers, we think. <laughs> right. And but it's, it's such a beautiful that thing. It's not the super mom that's carrying it out. It's the super God that's carrying it out through the super mom. You know what I'm saying? So it's oh, not yeah. just the us know it, but we've got to convey it to them that, hey, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, you know, we'd be consumed. So thank God for that. 
you know, the people. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. So they'll need it. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of your family, um, is your family involved with you in your ministry in any way? They are supporters of my my ministry. They are pushers. Believe it or not, my children are two vocalists, and I wish I had the same oomph that my mom and dad had. You know, they made me sing. I didn't have a choice. But my, my children were blessed with the voice, and they're just kind of like, you know, these new age children. Uh, yeah, I don't want to sing. But as far as them assisting in the ministry, they're really encouragers, and, and, you know, they critique me, and I always ask them for their honest opinions and whatnot. But definitely they push mom and, and, and wife to another level, and I thank God for their continued support. I really wouldn't be able to do it without them. And, and as you know, our kids can be our most brutal critics. I mean, they can be brutally <laughs> honest. We oh, know yes. we're going to get the truth from our children, you know. It's, yes. it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, last night, is, in fact, I was asking my daughter something, and um, and I, I was through talking. As a matter of fact, that, you know, I'm in school to be, I want to be a teacher. And uh-huh. I was going to go over an assignment that I was doing, and she's in 10th grade, and I said, and I was kind of tailoring it towards 10th grade, so uh-huh. that she could relate, and when I was through talking, she said, Mom, that was great, but you'll never get all that done in one class period. I'm like, <laughs> okay, spoken <laughs> like a true student. Yes. Um, and, and I, you know, and I had to ask her, I said, are you saying that because you hope I won't, or is you just, she said, no, you just won't have enough time. I'm just going to go ahead and tell oh, you now. Wow. I have she a said, but you should. too, and that sounds just like him. <laughs> Amazing. Look, thank you. She, thank but you she, did, she did follow up. She did follow up by saying, but you should get a stellar grade on the uh, assignment because you went over and above. I mean, no teacher could accomplish that in class. I said, oh, okay, I feel better that's, now. That's you know, so it was, it was really funny, you know, that she is my brother honest child so I know what you mean when you want yes. kind of their feedback you know that mm-hmm. they're not going to leave any holes far it's going to be right I out know. there front and center so you better be ready <laughs> you're absolutely right I appreciate that be ready <laughs> well this journey has taken you all kinds of places I mean you you have sang with some of the world's greats and yeah. and Talk a little bit about your experiences because, you know, you have done so much in the realm of music. I mean, you, you've sang secular music, you've sang gospel music. Mm-hmm. And and just talk about some standout moments for you that have just, that really helped, you know, kind of mold and shape your career and, and that were very, I guess, humbling and enlightening for you all at the same time. Well, it was a beautiful thing. Even earlier this year, I had the uh, opportunity to sing uh, at the Radio One Love Getaway in Nassau, Bahamas, and this was one of the largest uh, audiences, if you will, that I was able to that I've been able to minister to, and I mean thousands of people to be able to come up again. This is music typically uh, the majority have never even heard, and for people to recognize and to have been touched and inspired by a song that God poured into me, it was like wow. You know, not that I felt like I was running with the, quote, big dogs or anything like that, but it's like, wow, the same God that uses these others is can also use me. And guess what? He's the same God that can use each and every one of us. He's no respecter of person. And, you know, from the Bahamas to, I mean, whether I was in Europe singing, it's been beautiful. God's presence is amazing. The anointing is the same. It breaks yokes, you know, and I just... Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a frightening experience sometimes, and I'm not meaning fearful uh, because I'm having to really, really submit every time. Every time I don't rely on any previous experience when I get an opportunity to minister. But it's a frightening experience having to really, really deny myself and, and, and to really decrease and allow God's presence to, to minister. And you're dealing with the humanity side of people whether or not they'll receive you, they don't know you, you're not the the big name in life, they may not have heard you, but really, really going and having the passion and people receiving, that's been one of the things that have really been a blessing to me. And that encourages me to keep going, keep going, because people really need the realness and and the passion that comes with uh, ministering gospel music. Well, and, and key word there, you said passion. Um, mm-hmm. When I heard, you know, your music for the first time, I, I felt that passion. It came through on the song, and I was just, I was incredibly moved and touched by it. It was, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's one of those songs, I mean, your music is the music that I can put in at the end of a long 
trying, stressful day. Yeah. And, you know, we never have those, especially if we're moms, right? <laughs> <Boy>. <laughs> but I can put this in, and it just plays over and over. And there is something about your voice coupled with the mm-hmm. lyrics and the mm-hmm. passion that comes through that just puts me at ease. And, mm-hmm. um, and even when I'm not having a stressful day, I still listen to it. You know, it's just a oh, great uplift. That. And it really does, it does speak to your soul. It really does. Yes. And, um. It has been such a blessing to me. I was, like I said, the first time I heard your songs, I was in tears. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so good, you know. Um, And and I listen to a lot of music. (laughs) Well, I get a lot of music in on a daily basis, and um, Mm -hmm. but it's rare when I get music that just really moves me, and that Mm -hmm. undoubtedly your music did that for me um, and has continued to be a blessing, you know, ever since. Um, yeah. And and I would like to talk to you a little bit about your music because it is it is incredibly uplifting. It's motivational. It's ah, it's just so beautiful. I guess is the best way to describe it. If I could only give it one word, beautiful is mm-hmm. it. Oh. Your song "New Beginnings." I mm-hmm. you know of the songs that I've heard, that is my all. That is just my favorite, hands down. Yeah. I love yeah. the music. I love the arrangement, the lyrics, your voice. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, everything. I mean, where did you get the inspiration of the song? Obviously, it came from God, but was there an experience that kind of helped propel the song forward for you, or, or how did it how did it bloom? Yeah, there was there was definitely an experience. Um, if I could use one word, it would be crossroad. I was at a crossroad in my life, and I needed to make a decision. What are you going to do? Are you going to live for Christ? You know, do or die. Are you going to do it? all or not, nothing at all, and I had to really, really turn my back on the world and uh, say, okay, God, for you I live, for, for you I die, and I believe this was the turning point, and of course, Second Corinthians 5.17, if any man is in Christ, in Christ, that's the key thing, any man in Christ, new creature, and it's like, you know, God, okay, here I am, I'm starting over again, And uh, but I thank you that Every day, I don't, regardless of my age, God, where I was at that time, I needed to start anew. I needed a clean slate. I needed to just put the past behind me. I had a failed marriage and I had so many disappointments, so many things that I could have done them all over again. I would have changed this, that, and the other. And then we all had that story. But mm-hmm. it was like, you know what? Enough already. Linda, stop, stop, stop. Start over. Life, your life is not over. You know, you're still here. So get it together <laughs> and yeah. move forward. And that's exactly where I was. It was like a, you know, one of those airplane. I don't know if you remember the old movie Airplane when the guy slapped the guy in the pool thing, pool pit. Yeah. He was like, get it together. Do you, do you remember that? Like, get it together. <laughs> you know, move on. You know, start again. Get it together and just move on. Life happens. And that's what I had to do, give myself a pep talk, like, like David had to encourage himself, and I find myself having to encourage myself all the time. And this was one of the times in, in that encouragement, God gave me a song. So uh, it's this song that is able to encourage others, so regardless of where they are in life, they too can begin again. And, you know, it, it's interesting that, that you said what you did because every single person out there, when they hear the song, you know, they they can identify. Everybody has a testimony. Everybody has yeah. a story. And we've yeah. all had those crossroad moments where oh, we Lord. had to make a choice. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and thankfully God is never as hard on us as we are yeah, on ourselves. We are on ourselves. You, he, Thank you, Jesus. He's, <laughs> he's just waiting for us to, like you say, get it together, yes. you know, catch our breath, mm-hmm. get our bearings, and move mm-hmm. forward with him. And then he's he's probably sitting up there going, you know, what took you so long? You knew exactly. you were going to get to this point. I mean, if you had done this like five weeks ago, just think where you'd be now. Kind of, yes, you know, his sense of yes. humor is just amazing sometimes. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we've all had those moments. And and it really, I think the song New Beginnings is is a song that just speaks to any and everyone that's ever been through trials. I mean, we're not going to be on this earth and not go through something. That's um, right. Because this life, due to the fall of man, I mean, it that is. is kind of what has happened to this world mm-hmm. and continues to happen on a daily basis. So, But the the great 
praise in all this is that God gives us that opportunity. Every morning is a brand new opportunity. If we are allowed by God to wake up, we've got a brand new, fresh start, a new beginning. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, yesterday is yesterday. It's past. You can't. You can't it's reclaim done. it. You can't change it. <laughs> you can only start with the day and the moment you're in and move forward from there. You got and, it. Uh, and, and I think about so many times, I mean, I've been guilty of this in my past as well, you mm-hmm. know, of spending so many times and days and hours of dwelling over situations and part of things that had no relevance, didn't need to be a part of the present. Yeah, and and all the time that was wasted that you know yes. that God you was not living. in the moment. <laughs> yes, that's you right. Stop living when you begin dwelling on the past. There's absolutely no way that you can live. You're living if you're dwell if you're stuck in the past. So in order that's to right. move forward, you have got to let go of those things. You know, it's like a tug of war, or you have something in your your right hand and something behind you in your other hand. You've got to let go of that other thing in order to propel forward. And all mm-hmm. my pastor used this awesome example just on Sunday morning. Ironically, he preached a sermon on new beginnings, but he used the bow and arrow as an example. You know, sometimes what seems like a, a step back, you know, when we pull that bow and arrow back, you know, it has to come back in order for it to propel. So I thank mm-hmm. God, thank God for what was behind me, not that I have attained, but, baby, I pressed. And I thank God for what's lying ahead if we just keep it moving. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and <laughs> and also it's amazing how I have come to embrace and cherish in, in kind of a, a unique way, I should say, those mm-hmm. mistakes and those trials because they have made me who I am today. If I hadn't That's had right. the trials, I couldn't be where I am today. Um, right. If I hadn't had the heartaches and the hurts, there's no mm-hmm. way I could have – my yeah. faith grounded in God today. I mean, if, if no one ever had anything happen to them or went through anything, they would yeah. not have a reason to need God or feel like they would because they'd say, yeah, hey, absolutely. I got it made. Mm-hmm. But I That's think right. God allows these trials because he wants us to draw closer to him. And sometimes mm-hmm. it takes us being on our faces mm-hmm. and not flat to be able to look up because all we've got is up <laughs> to go from yeah. there to be able to see him and meet him and him meet us in our time of mm-hmm. need. And and it's amazing how that works. Um, mm-hmm. But time and again, God has shown me over and over mm-hmm. how powerful that can be if we allow him to work in our lives and we just completely surrender ourselves, um, you know, to him in every way. And, 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 yep. it, and you're right. Sometimes it requires walking away from certain people, things, mm-hmm. situations, Habit, mm-hmm. whatever it all might be, yes. in order to do and that, you have to lay it. Him. It's all or nothing. You can't, you that's can't it, it. pick and choose what you're going to surrender to God. That's right. That's On top of everything that you've done musically, you also, you know, have such a heart for praise and worship, and you have, um, I mean, you're a music director music coordinator, worship leader, and you have done so many things in that realm. And talk a little bit about that side of your ministry because, you know, obviously music is your life and it's in your blood. Um, What aspect of that do you enjoy the most? I think um, while I enjoy living in praise and worship, one of the things that really sticks out for me, I'm a former Army soldier, and for years I had the opportunity to uh, coordinate the music services for soldiers in training. So while they were in basic training in AIT, you know, not able to go home and see their parents or worship with their families, you know, while they're away at boot camp or whatever, you know, some of them, whether they attended church while they were at home or not, or just attend church as a, a as a mode of getting away from the drill sergeant for two hours, they come to church and an opportunity to to be with these soldiers for an hour, teaching them songs, like in literally 30 minutes, and then leading them into praise and worship uh, in the next hour, and to hear at the culmination of the basic training and the the AITs and whatnot, the difference that uh, that particular uh, training made in their lives and set them up for, for success 
it, it has been amazing. I still have some of the cards that I received from soldiers from over 10 years back, you know, saying, you know, that, hey, if it wasn't for the praise and worship, they don't know how they would have made it through basic training. And I just, mm-hmm. I know that whether they were career soldiers or if they went back home, reservists or National Guard, that experience left a footprint in their lives, and I'm forever grateful for those opportunities like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's, I think, um, uh, and as I understand it, you uh, served in our military, correct? I did. I did serve two times, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I just want to thank you personally for your service to our country um, and, you know, and all the men and women out there. And, and what a blessing because, um, you know, especially our military, um, I just have so much respect for the military because of what mm-hmm. they do every single day to protect people like me, little yes. old me, here we go again, you know, <laughs> to be able to sit here and talk on air with you and yeah. everybody else out there who gets to walk free and do their thing, yes. you know. And if it were not for our military, we could not do that. We would not have those freedoms in place. Mm-hmm. And I, I just have, you know, and as tomorrow being 9-11, I mean, it just really Isn't that strikes something? a chord. Yeah, remembering. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, striking a chord deep crazy. within me. Um, you know, just our men and women who are so well, just revered in this country, and and you know, for all that it's worth, I I just give them all the praise. You know, I give every Amen. one of you who have served, um, and and then for you to have served, and then to be able to bring your ministry into the military, um, yeah. for those men and women, I mean, the impact, like you said, that you must have had on them and and for that to even be incorporated into it is is just a wonderful thing because um you know our our military men and women the military the families of our military men and women i mean it's not an easy road to get up and and serve your country and it's not an easy road for those families you know to to partake and travel down as well so uh i just want to say a heartfelt thank you to to you and to everyone out there for all you know for your service and for all that you do to help help people like me remain free. Yes, yes, thank God for that. Well, I want to ask you before we close, um can we expect an album, a full album from you in the near future? Um I know the the EP is out, the new beginnings. Um but what kind of great things have you got coming up? Well, believe it or not, the album is available. I finished it earlier okay, this great. year. Uh, yes, the album is available on iTunes, Amazon, whatnot, and I actually have an EP with uh, Christmas music uh, out, available also right now, and I'm working on uh, finishing that project as well as some other things uh, you know, I have up my sleeve. <laughs> but definitely pushing the full New Beginnings album, of course, New Beginnings being the title track of that project. Uh, but the Christmas songs are definitely uh, available as well. So in this a myriad, a myriad of, of, of songs, a collection, I call it a kaleidoscope of Linda. It really is a collection of me, each song being totally different. But um, it's something on there for everybody. So I encourage everyone to get it uh, and, and be blessed by it. Well, I can I can definitely advocate for this album to anyone out there listening uh, go get it. Go buy it because it is one that you will play again and again. And not only that, but you will be incredibly touched and moved um, mm-hmm. just by the music that Linda has put together. And, Linda, I will say to you, when you get the Christmas album um, finished, love to get a copy. Um, I'll be doing some Christmas mm-hmm. shows forthcoming, you know, as the holiday season yeah. commences. And, uh, of course, we would love to have that be a part of the mix of music that we'll play here on the program. So uh, that would be it would just be such a blessing to have you a part of it. So definitely. Yeah. That well, awesome. I cannot thank you an, enough for, for taking time out of your incredibly busy schedule to be with us this evening and just chatting about your career and your music. Um, you are definitely, you know, you possess a God-given talent and ability, and you're just a blessing to so many, myself included. So thank you so much. Don, thank you. I, I'm, I'm honored. Thank you so much. God bless you and all that you're God doing. bless you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that as well. And before we wrap, I'm going to play a couple of your songs and uh, for the listening audience. And, uh, again, appreciate everything that you do for God's kingdom 
and uh, we look forward to more coming from you forthcoming. Absolutely, absolutely, all for the glory of God. Be blessed. All right. Well, thank you. Take care, and God bless. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, folks. As if the interview did not bless you enough, I must tell you this music will. Um, and going to play a couple cuts off of her latest album. Uh, this is Linda Clark. The first one I'm going to play is called The Cause of You, followed by the title cut, New Beginning. <laughs>